Despite being such a well-known figure in Dragon Ball, Minoru Maeda's whereabouts for the past decades have been mostly unknown. However, that changes today as we explore, delve, and discover where exactly he disappeared to after Dragon Ball Z. Of course, real quick though, the featured artist is Marino. Absolutely love his style, his drawings are really nice. It's quite difficult to strike that blend between a more realistic take on anime characters while also holding appeal and I personally think he does it very well. So please go show him some support, he definitely deserves more followers. So recently I went into depth as to where many well-known animators from this franchise have been all this time. For the sake of time though, Maeda didn't make the cut. However, being a name that's almost as well known as the series author himself, I thought he more than deserved his own video. But let's dive in. So much in line with his colleagues at Studio Junio, Maeda likewise was jumping between different series during his time on Dragon Ball. However, in his case, he accumulated quite a sizable list of credits. In just 1987, he worked on four different productions, and that's outside of Dragon Ball where he was still regularly supervising episodes and even worked on another movie. From just credits alone, you can observe how quick he was. And a side note is that he seemed to have carried Toriyama's style into several of those shows, a detail Maeda noted himself. A pretty clear example of this is with Bug T Honey, to the point you wouldn't be mistaken to think it's based off a Toriyama adaptation at first glance, especially with the reuse of Taro's design from Dr. Slump, as well as drawing a similar hairstyle to Goku's for another character. Another tidbit is that Studio Last House, another regular on Dragon Ball at this time, also was contracted for an episode. It's also worth noting that the following year marks Maeda's debut on the Anpan Man series, considering his involvement on that franchise has been the longest out of anything within his career. But in early 1993 with the second Dragon Ball Z TV special, would conclude his time on the franchise, with another former Junio member now employed by Toei Animation, Katsuyoshi Nakatsuru taking over his position, and Tadayoshi Yamamura from Shindo Productions handling the character designs and supervision for future theatrical releases. Although considering his love for rounder and simpler designs, it should be of no surprise considering that he would move immediately onto children's shows like Tama and Friends, and a Kaiketsu Zuori movie around the same time, bringing his familiar simple touch. He must have got the break he wanted though, considering he would then work on Street Fighter as an animation supervisor, alongside Marusuke Oguchi, to then move on to the TV series in 1995. Quite a contrast to the prior year, and displays his versatility with different styles. In 1996, Maeda, much like one of his old junior colleagues, Hisashi Oguchi, would take on a pretty high position within the Lupin franchise, being selected to handle the character designs for The Secret of Twilight Gemini, as well as some key animation on Dead or Alive the same year. It's possible he landed this position through a connection with a different Aguchi, Marusuke Aguchi, with that relationship probably formed during their time on Street Fighter, as they would work on both movies together and in quite high positions. This must have certainly been an interesting throwback for Maeda as well, considering his last entry on this franchise was in the early 70s, contributing in between animation during his early days in the industry. Going forward, he has a credit on Jungle Emperor Leo, adapted from the work of the legendary Osama Tezuka in 97, this time being some key animation. However, 1998 would mark quite a transition for Maeda as he and two other members, one of them being an old friend, Minoru Okazaki, who likewise has his own extensive history on Dragon Ball, directing and storyboarding the very first episode, and sitting as a series director on the original series, would lead a group of staff and break away from Junio founding a new studio, Synergy SP, in late September that year. This name also might sound a little familiar to some of you as I brought them up in my Hunter x Hunter rewatch breakdown on Twitter last year, on how they had a very similar stylistic approach and style to their episodes as Junio's on Dragon Ball, in relation to the staff's devotion of not only drawing upon the style from the source material, but also enhancing it with a bold and detailed approach. And without getting too sidetracked here, I always found it interesting in the similarities between these two productions, in that the company which produced each of them had very little input animation-wise from their own staff, in Nippon's case apparently none at all, with each episode instead being subcontracted to different studios that would rotate between episodes. Hunter x Hunter also lacked a chief animation supervisor, and so there's a noticeable stylistic change between episodes, very much like Dragon Ball. Anyway, going back to Maeda for the rest of the decade and into the 2000s, he exclusively sticks to doing character designs and supervision on a decent list of shows, that is until 2005 with Ah My Goddess, 
This marks a bit of an unusual change for Maeda worth pointing out as up to this point like we've seen he's been quite involved with movies rather than TV productions and when he is with the latter it's in most cases character designs or supervision. So seeing him stick to a TV series for 5 episodes but more so as solely a key animator is certainly a rarity. For comparison he had only 2 credits for key animation over the entirety of Dragon Ball and with the last time he provided animation on more than one episode being 1980. Later in that year and into early 2006 he returns back to supervising, this time on a mecha anime, Gun Parade Orchestra for 3 episodes, and also provides a bit of key animation on a Doraemon movie around the same time. However, Maeda seemed to be scaling back his workload at this point, considering outside of Anpan Man he has nothing else credited to his name for the rest of the decade and for much of the next one. At this point Maeda was in his early 50s and had been working in the industry since his late teens, so it's not that out there to say that this could have been related to his overall energy. And on that note, I probably should delve a little more into his work on Anpan Man. As I mentioned earlier, it's been the longest franchise he's worked on. All throughout the 80s and 90s he was still bouncing between it and Dragon Ball and has remained on every single movie as either a character designer or animation supervisor and in most cases both all throughout the 2000s, 2010s and is still currently working on the series to this day. In total he has worked on up to 30 movies so far and on a TV series that has spanned over a thousand episodes. Anyway onward to 2017, this year would mark his first time in over 10 years he would enter a production outside of Anpan Man, being for the first episode in a series of Paralympic specials meant to promote the 2020 Summer Paralympics. The story was also directed by quite a big name Yoichi Takahashi, although he never seemed to have attracted the same amount of attention in the west, his manga Captain Tsubasa was a massive hit in Japan and Maeda had worked on the third anime adaptation of that series in the early 2000s so it's likely the connections made with Takahashi could have landed him on this project. And so if you were interested in checking out Maeda's more recent work and weren't exactly interested in watching a show about a man with a pastry for a head, this special does provide the rare glimpse to see that. And when taking a closer look at his design specifically, he's taken a rather good approach going after more of an animation friendly design, sporting few lines and simple shading while also incorporating the stylistic notes of Takahashi's work creating quite an appealing blend of new and old. I can't help but wonder if you would see a similar approach if he ever did work on Dragon Ball again. And on that note I have no doubt since there are many fans who love his work and are interested of the topic of that ever happening, Maeda did mention in an interview how if there was to be a new Dragon Ball production he would be very excited to work on it once again but at the same time was also interested at letting the younger generation handle it which was quite a similar point probably one of the second biggest names at Junyo next to Maeda, Masaki Sato echoed several years back. Although it is important to keep in mind this interview is from 2010 and of course he never went on to work on the new TV series that came about 5 years later, Dragon Ball Super or any other Dragon Ball related production since then. Additionally it's important to keep in mind that he is currently 67 and will be turning 68 soon so on the off chance he did contribute anything it would be quite minor. He hasn't been credited with animating since 2006 so I doubt it would be that and it's highly doubtful it would be character designs with Shintani and Kabota currently having filled those roles unless it was maybe a sub character designer position or supervising an episode. Regardless that does bring us to the end of where exactly Maeda went after Dragon Ball Z. Like I said he is still involved in the industry albeit far less than he once was. You have a new Anpan movie releasing later in the year which he is no doubt on, probably supervising it as well. But with that note though, thank you for watching, quite enjoyed putting this video together especially since it involved Hunter x Hunter and Lupin but thank you again and for your support and I'll see you later.